we'll see how that goes. I have no idea how it's going to go. Headphones over there. We're recording. We're recording. We're recording. Ooh, a minute 22. I'm procrastinating. What is happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Got the cans on. Different set of cans. I'm trying out a different set of cans. My beloved HD380 Pros have been discontinued. I have two pairs of these because I love them so much and they are amazing, but I'm trying out other headphones. Because people always ask me, what headphones do you use? And I want to make sure that if there's headphones that are on the market that are comparable, that I recommend. So today I'm testing out a different pair. Okay, I have a microphone in front of me that I have been interested in trying out and a fellow booth junkie had loaned this to me all the way from Australia. What? Shipped this thing halfway around the world so that I could talk into it. Man, what an honor. Wellesley, thank you so much for shipping your Harlan Hogan Signature MXL VO. 1A. Manufacturer is MXL. The model is the VO1A, and it's the signature edition for Harlan Hogan. So if you're, uh, if you're familiar with uh, the voiceover world, you probably know who Harlan Hogan is, and this is his signature microphone. Now, this microphone is, it, its claim is that it is the voiceover microphone. That's a big claim. That's a big claim. I zoomed in too far. That's a big claim. That's a big, big claim. So I would like to compare this microphone to a number of different microphones to see if it really is the voiceover microphone. What do we have here? Let's zoom out. I zoomed the wrong way. I got a whole line of microphones back here, and we'll give them each, you know, uh, uh, we'll give you a little taste of each microphone side by side. Some other of these microphones back here, I would consider to be among the pantheon of the voiceover microphones. And I have some other ones that are similar in the price point to this microphone. Now, let's start there. The price point of this microphone is $299, which as far as voiceover microphones is pretty doggone affordable. It's not cheap by any respect. $300 is a bunch of money. And if you're going to spend a bunch of money on a microphone, you want to make sure you're getting a good microphone. So that's really why I want to test this out. If this is going to make something as bold a claim as the voiceover microphone, then we're going to... Uh, we're going to put it through its paces because that's a tall claim. Rather than just comparing it to one, we're going to compare it to a bunch of other microphones that I think could also qualify as the voiceover microphone. What do we have in the booth to test it against? Let's just run it through real quick. We're going to start with the CAD M179. We've got a Rode NT1, not the NT1A. This is the NT1, the Lewitt 440 Pure, my beloved CAD E100S, the Neumann TLM103. And then I think this is the microphone. For many studios around the world, this is the microphone. It's the microphone for instruments. It's the microphone for voiceover. We've got a Neumann U87. And then finally, a little something different. This is not different, but in the voiceover world, this is probably one of the voiceover microphones. This is the Sennheiser MKH416. Okay, we've got the M179 set up. Now, the reason I've chosen this one, this is by CAD. This is the M179, and this is the reason I'm starting off with this one is twofold. One, it's to demonstrate a particular choice that MXL made when they implemented the VO1, and I can understand their reasoning for it, and I want to give a little bit of a demonstration of why I think they made the choices that they made. In the, in the documentation, for the VO1A, they show its polar pattern. And I was very surprised when I saw it. Can we see that? If I get out of there, it's right here. Can you see that? See that right there, that polar pattern? Look at that, am I in focus? Gosh, I hope we're in focus. The polar pattern. The polar pattern, it says it's a cardioid pattern microphone, but the diagram shows it to actually be a very wide cardioid pattern bordering on an omnidirectional. It's not actually an omnidirectional. If you talk over on this side of the microphone, you can see that my voice really does fall off quite a bit, uh, but it is very close. It's a much wider cardioid than, than you would typically expect. And 
any of these other microphones that are in the cardioid pattern. So the th I'm starting with the M179 because this one can also, this one is infinitely adjustable. You can adjust between all of the polar patterns. And so I also have this one set in a wide cardioid. And the reason I think they've made a choice in this microphone to be a wide cardioid is to keep it in a cardioid pattern, but eliminate as much proximity effect as they can. So if you're a voice actor and you sometimes need to get right up into the microphone and you need to chew on that microphone, m many microphones will demonstrate something called the proximity effect. And the proximity effect is the natural tendency for a microphone to become bassier sounding as the source gets closer to the microphone. So as, I, as my voice gets closer to the microphone, it will tend to get bassier. Unless you're in the omnidirectional pattern. Omnidirectional microphones do not show proximity effect. And so this microphone being very nearly omnidirectional shows very little proximity effect. So as I get closer to the microphone, you see that I just get louder. And I'm talking a little bit above it just so I don't pop into the diaphragm. Sorry, I know it's still going to happen. But I'm going to try and not pop into the diaphragm. But you can see that as I get closer to it, I don't actually get much bassier. So, as a voice actor, sometimes you're called on to chew on that microphone and back off. But because of its pattern, you don't really need to change the EQ settings in your, in your DAW to compensate for that bassiness that tends to occur. It also means that you can't get up there and become this bass monster, but that's a, that's a different choice. Okay, so I wanted to use the M179 as a way to demonstrate that. So right now, the M179 is in the very wide cardioid pattern, trying to mimic the pattern of the, of the, uh, the VO1A. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust its polar pattern while getting up right nice and close to that microphone. And as I uh, move it away from wide cardioid, now it's in a standard cardioid, and as I go more towards, and we'll detent, as I go past it, into the super cardioid pattern and up closer to the figure eight pattern, you can see that my voice becomes much bassier, much more. In some cases, it may sound actually muddy, but it actually gets a little bit bassier. And it only really demonstrates itself as the, as the pattern becomes narrower. As you move away from that and you start to get towards the wide cardioid again, and I'll go all the way to omnidirectional. Now I'm all the way in omnidirectional. You see that all the bass is gone and I just sound like me. So now I'll put it back towards the wide cardioid. That's the difference. That's why I think they've chosen that particular polar pattern for this microphone. It's an interesting choice. Okay, and so that is also the M179. That M179, 229 bucks is a is a is a good choice, especially with all those different patterns. But I do think that the that the highs in particular sound better on the uh, VO1A. Okay. So let's now switch to the next mic in the lineup. Now we have the Rode NT1, not the 1A, the Rode NT1 up against uh, the VO1A. Now the NT1 is very similar in price point. It's about $270, I think. But in that case, you get a whole kit. So you get a high quality, and I will say a high quality Rycote um, uh, uh, shock mount. What's the word? I, I want to say harp. Uh, the word is escaping me for this style of shock mount. Anyway, Rycote shock mounts are no joke. They're really good stuff. Under normal circumstances, I think I have a universal one that's uh, uh, very similar. It's uh, 99 bucks for just the shock mount. Yeah, that's right. So it's got a Ryko shock mount, and it also comes with a, with a pop filter, which I don't have in place at the moment. The VO1A, on the other hand, a little bit disappointing from my perspective, is it comes with a, a squeeze-style uh, shock mount. At least this one did, and that's what it looks like. It's original to the packaging. Rather than having one that's it's threaded on the bottom, so you can get a, a, a higher-quality shock mount, but the one that this comes with is a little bit on the cheesy side. Okay, now we've got a comparison between the 1A and the Lewitt 440. So this is the last one in the similar 
price point. So the Lewitt 440 Pure is another cardioid condenser microphone from the Lewitt company. And Lewitt has, I'm a big fan of the Lewitt microphones. I like their form factor. I like their build construction. I like their sound. Um, I'm, a, I'm a great big fan of the both the 550, the discontinued model, and the 540. This is its little sibling. Uh, the 440, it's sort of their intermediate level microphone, and I think it's also about $270. This one is a cardioid pattern microphone, and so far, all of the microphones, except for the 179, none of these have any buttons or switches or anything like that. They're just microphone. Now, you've heard me say this in many other videos. That's really just a choice of the manufacturer for what the microphone is intended for. It doesn't really matter if there are buttons or switches, but some, uh, some microphones will offer multiple patterns, as we'll see. Some offer uh, the ability to, to mic louder sources by having a pad switch. Some will also uh, have the ability to roll off some bass, uh, some take away some low, low, low end, which is uh, common in microphones. Especially good for when you're uh, when you're uh, miking certain instruments, or you want to take the proximity effect away via a, a mechanical switch. So, the Lewitt 440, also a cardioid condenser microphone. So these two are again in a similar price point. Now we've got two microphones in the booth that I think are could be vying for the voiceover microphone. What we've got now is the CAD E100S. Now, is the CAD E100S in the pantheon of the great microphones that you see? No, but it has a long reputation for being excellent, excellent, excellent for voiceover. It is really clear. It is really smooth. It's nice and hot. It's a really good microphone very forgiving of the voice and it's nice and smooth i have one right here this is my microphone if everybody who watches this channel for a long time knows i'm a great big fan of the cad e100s and it's one that i use quite a bit in my voice work it sounds good now there's a difference in pattern here this one is the wide cardioid this one is a super cardioid which means its lobe of sensitivity is very narrow so as you move off axis on this one it really does change quite quickly whereas the 1a will be um, much more forgiving for moving around the microphone whereas the e100s you can move but you can't move all that much so you got to be careful how you gesticulate in front of the microphone so there's the super cardioid cad E100S. Check, 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 check. Gray is a little bit hotter. Gray is a little bit hotter. Okay, now we've got one of the microphones that I think could be in the pantheon of the voiceover microphone. This is the Neumann TLM-103. This is one of my microphones, one I've used quite a bit in my voice work. The Neumann has been a classic microphone. This is much more like the VO1A in that there's no buttons, there's no switches. It's a single pattern microphone. It's just a cardioid microphone. So it's not quite as versatile as its big brother or as its big brother over there but that's why a lot of voice actors choose this microphone because you get the benefits of one of the world's greatest microphones in a, a much more optimized package for the voice actor. The voice actor doesn't really need some of the features that this other microphone has to offer. So the TLM-103 is something that you do see in studios all over the place. They're very high quality microphones and you do pay for it. You do pay for it a little bit. So the TLM-103 is a thousand dollars, generally speaking. So we're now at three times the price point of the VO1A. I will say that e even if you think they sound the same, the build quality on these two microphones is just worlds apart. This microphone probably weighs twice as much <laughs> as this one. Sorry, I realize I'm popping that microphone. It's a thing with the Neumann microphones that these microphones are super easy to uh, send plosives into. I really should be working with a pop filter in front of this microphone, but it gets in the way, so we're going to try and use a better technique now. Uh, but the, the TLM-103, it's got a great muscular tone. It's a really nice sounding microphone. And uh, it, I've been very, very impressed, very happy with this purchase. And as far as investing in my business, it's a microphone that has served me very, very well.
Okay, so now we have the VO1A against the MKH416. So this is another very, very common studio microphone for voiceover. This is another one of my my absolute favorite microphones. So I'm I'm putting the Harlan Hogan against sort of my my big three, the E100S, the TLM103, because those for me are the vo voiceover microphones. These are the ones I use all of the time in my studio. So I figure, mm, let's let's make a comparison. The 416 is a thousand dollars. There's a very significant price point between these two. The thing about the 416 for a voiceover is it is another really hot mic. It's not necessarily a neutral mic. It's the mic that you would use for anytime you really want to have that big announcer presence. There's a lot of presence in this microphone. So this is another microphone that I would consider one of the voiceover microphones. And we can see how the VO1A compares to it. Okay, and now we've got what could be considered the voiceover microphone, really the, the voiceover microphone, because in many cases it's considered, in many studios, it is just the microphone. And what we have here is the Neumann U87. The Neumann U87 has been, it's ubiquitous. It is in studios everywhere. But what we're talking about here is a tenfold increase in price. The Neumann U87 is about 3000 bucks on a good day. This is 300 bucks on a good day. The Neumann does, now the, the, I, you, when I talked about the, the where did I put the 103? The 103 is over here. When I talked about the 103, the 103 um, is sort of like the baby brother to the U87. It has got a lot fewer features and they took out the transformer. Uh, they took away the different polar patterns. Whereas the, the Neumann U87 is a multi-pattern microphone, it's got additional button, buttons and switches for padding and all of that good stuff, all of which is missing from the, uh, the VO1A because it really doesn't necessarily apply in the voiceover studio. If you're just a voice actor and you've got a U87, chances are it's just going to sit and live in the cardioid pattern. The bases, you know, the, the, the switches are all just going to stay put. So you don't necessarily need all of those additional features. Now, the build quality of these microphones, I'd say, is different leagues altogether. The U87 is professional grade. It is the thing, right? It is the thing. It weighs a ton. It's built like a brick. It's as sensitive as any mic could possibly be. I know there's like ten and $12,000 mics, $15,000 microphones. It's a whole different echelon. But no one will ever criticize a, a U87. I would say no one would ever criticize U87. Are there snobs? Yeah, somebody's going to say, a U87, really? Is that the best you can do? Well, yeah. <laughs> For most people, it's the best you can do. <laughs> but our point here is, uh, if you're really talking about the voiceover microphone, it's some variant of the U87 going back from the 50s to the one that was made last week. The U87 is a classic microphone, and you will find this in studios. I've worked in many studios, and I've stood in front of many different U87s. It's been the microphone because it's, you know, it's really super versatile. It's, it's the thing. If you didn't hear them side by side, maybe you wouldn't necessarily be able to identify because I do think that the 1A is a fairly smooth sounding mic. I do think it does sound good. For voiceover, whether or not it's the, the, the voiceover microphone, I think that still remains to be seen. What do you think? We, we've run the gamut. We've run through a whole bunch of microphones. Some that could be in the, the voiceover microphone realm. I'd be curious to see how you think it stacks up against the one that claims to be the, the voiceover microphone. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Did we find the voiceover microphone? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. That's all I have for you today. Now, go get yourself a microphone. Maybe the microphone. Maybe the microphone. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Get yourself any microphone and get into a booth and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.